David. Hey, buddy. Welcome back, man. Yes. Let's do it. Uh, we're going to do this a second time. The first time was uh, was good, yeah. but uh, people suck, <laughs> and that's just life, you know? <laughs> so uh, how are you? How's Chico? Oh, we're great. It's a beautiful day, man. We're just enjoying life, you know? Yeah. He's pleasant. The little words I live by. Yeah. Hey, Chico? That's right. That's right. That's right, Papa. Where'd you ride this weekend? This weekend was such a beautiful weather. Where didn't too. I ride? Oh, is the question. Where didn't you ride? Well, honestly, bro, I don't like to ride during the weekends, only because there's so many people. I agree, and it's kind of like a big distraction for me. You know, I can't focus. You know, and I can't enjoy the ride like you know I'm supposed to. Yeah. Or like you're supposed to. So I I had the opportunity to go. Like, we had this ride coming up, and I thought to myself, you're going to Venice and all that. And it's not that I don't like those areas. It's just it, I needed traffic. the solitude, you know. Yeah. I don't like driving in traffic. And it's, it's it sucks. So I went to Ojai, went to a, a retreat out there. There's a spiritual retreat that used to be a home. And uh, somebody turned it into a spiritual retreat. So you can go and meditate. You can go and, you know, whatever. Do you make appointments for that or you just show up? You can sh- just show up. You can just ride your bike over there and do that? Yeah. That's well, fucking, you see I it. mean, I want to do that. My bike's pretty loud, so kind of like they're all looking. Defeats the purpose. You know. <laughs> so. Like, what a dick. <laughs> What's this guy yeah. doing? Right. And so I show up on my bike. It's really loud. And they're looking at me like, hmm, you know, but they looked at me. Obviously, didn't think I'm the average biker. You know, I had the yeah. you know, Chico with me, had the helmet. It, it got their interest. What do you like, mean, the average biker? <laughs> dun 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 dun. No, no, I know, I know. I'm a I'm a bike enthusiast, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so I went there. A friend of mine actually uh, referred me to this place, and at, at the time, I was going through some stuff, you know, and relationship stuff, and. Only you, man. And only you. It, it, you know, it gave me some clarity, man. Just to be in that space where it's wide open and you can see the whole valley of Ohio. Uh, so, so hold on. Let me slow you down. Let me slow you down. So, it, it's a house, but it's not just a house. They have a, they have multiple acres or a big property that you could just kind of relax yeah. and just escape. That's they awesome. Have events. Um, oh, they do events there. Yeah, so it's a huge bath. property. So it's like one of those Ojai like farmlands that yeah. they have, right? Yeah, it's overlooking. Okay. Um, this is only my second time there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I found it. It was it was actually really hard to find, but I found it this time, so it was good. It was all meant to be. Yeah. But this time I had the mindset differently because back when I went, I was just started getting into energy work, just starting to focus on on my higher self, you know, which is something that I live for every day, you know. Coming from it, once you discovered, yeah, yeah, how to access it. Well, I wouldn't say you discover it; you're downloading it again because your body is like a computer, right? So you're changing wardrobes, so your soul and spirit live forever, infinitely, right? So they can travel to different dimensions, or you can come back to Earth. You know. So, so I had a buddy of mine tell me if this applies to this. He would say that um, the same thing, but that our, our human form was just a vehicle that our soul is driving in this lifetime until it's done. It's just it's just a car. Just, you know. Right. I like to say it's your body is the vessel, but your body is a computer. Right. So, you know, you, your computer changes. Like the matrix. While. Yeah. So, you so have different you, download programs. Your soul is the hard drive. Your spirit is the memory mm. so you you get a new computer you download that information again and so you obtain each time you come to earth or travel in different dimensions you obtain the knowledge that's why there's a but, lot of resonance like right but, but 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 what, what, but you know because there's that there's that thing and i've said it before on the podcast there's things you know you can't do there are things you know you can't do and there are things that you don't know can't do you know like you know like i know i can't fly a plane i know i can't you know steer a submarine Mm -hmm. i know that but then it's like what is that 
I, I don't know. I, I it's like a bird that's stuck here. That's why I keep looking over there. It's a hummingbird. <laughs> like something. It's 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 there with the lights and You'll the window. Have some chica. Hey, you owe me some money. Yeah. yeah. Come on. Yeah. Hey, pay me my money. <laughs> it's it's a vehicle. It's a soul. You're the child support. Yeah. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> Fuck. Not again. Um, but shit. You know, like there, there's things that you don't know. Like like I, I get. I get if you have a computer and you have a new computer, you're going to just, you know, transfer your software. Yeah. You know, but sometimes you buy a new computer and you don't even know what software to get, you know. So it, it, isn't it kind of a discovery? Because you're kind of reprogramming it again. But we we're, when we come, it's like a fresh, you know, slate. Yeah, well, it's interesting you say that because um, how we describe I mean, uh, us light workers, how we describe it, is basically um, you can come new, the soul can be new in this on this earth and in in, in a different dimensions. Yeah. You know, um, and you're more vulnerable. So you're here to learn how to evolve. And how you evolve is based off of how many times you've been here mm. and if you've done the work to connect to your higher self. And that's what we're here for is to evolve and to connect to our higher self. That's like the story of the egg. Yeah, you, you've heard that story. No. Yeah, the huevo. Yeah, the huevo, <laughs> the huevo, not huevos. <laughs> but the, it, it's it's a story of of exactly what you're saying that we come back and we come back in different forms and and we live the life of you know poverty of rich of you know uh, handicapped whatever the case is woman male, but at, at the end of the story, I, I, it, it gets very intellectual and very very nice and poetic. But at the end of the story, it's like we are all these people just living over and over this life, you know. And when we treat somebody bad, we're actually treating ourselves bad, mm -hmm. you know, at some point of the life. But I'll, I'll send you that. It's, it's called, if you Google the egg, the story of the egg, mm. you know. But it's, it's it, it, the guy faces God at one point. The only reference I have with an egg is like, where one, you know, it just sits there. Lazy, yeah. lazy, you know, yeah. doesn't move. That's, that's the Latino, you know, that's the uh, no seas huevón, cabrón. Exactly. Vete, ya, levántate, que chingados te pasa. Gonorrea, gonorrea, you know, like what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Those are the days you brought back some childhood memories, man. I'm getting goosebumps. I'm gonna pull out the belt. <laughs> oh, no, 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 <laughs> no, don't even <laughs> see and now. Maybe like 15 years ago, would have had some triggers on that, yeah, but you know, I. You know, it, one of those things is where you look back at your childhood, and that is part of the reasons why I took this journey to to tap into my higher self. And when I say tap into your higher self, is you're invoking spiritualism. Now, spiritualism doesn't necessarily mean it's religion. Religion is, to me is more stories, right? And I've tried everything. You know, I grew up in a Mormon church for 21 years. Really? And going into church and falling asleep and like, oh my God, this is not resonating with me. And I couldn't really relate to a man finding gold plates by a tree and telling us w how we should live. Yeah. You know, I didn't, wasn't resonating with that. So. And Scientology is even crazier oh God, story. But anyways. But I, I mean, see, I can't judge, you know, because yeah. there's, there's. Yeah, but it was just created something. like 50 years ago. And it was like a guy landed on Earth, some kind of goddish thing. Like, it's just weird. Yeah. And then the guy Trust that created me. it is, is a writer. <laughs> the guy that created the religion is a writer. Yeah. So he can just write in, oh, let's add some like, of this. Yeah, in there. <laughs> I'll be the god. Yeah. So, so, so you went on this journey. I did. And. And I found that it just wasn't for me. I wasn't resonating with it. And I have to resonate with something. If it's empowering, it, I want to go get some more of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of like school with all the old curriculums. You know what he's learning anything because it's not fun. Yeah. But it should be fun and inviting and enticing. You're going into you should, Yeah, you, should, you should be interested. In. Yeah, and I just wasn't. And so I found. And, and, and they do this in general with everybody. And I, I think it was. Um, Albert Einstein that says if you judge because they try to teach the same thing to everybody but everybody's not capable of doing the exact same thing people have different interests and it says uh, if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree it would think it's stupid for the rest of its life <laughs> you know <laughs> so I understand what you're saying about it has to you yeah, have to connect to it you have to there has to be some kind of resonance 
Right. And if you're not inspired or it doesn't feel good in your heart space, then it's not good. Yeah. So just let it go. So I I've started seeking my higher self, just going in because the spiritualism, like I said, is not about religion. It's it's not focused on that. Spiritualism is the science of the body. It's mind, body, spirit. So I I looked at myself and with all these traumas, you know, especially inner child, uh, I was reckless, man. I, I, I didn't feel loved. I didn't feel worthy of anything, um, you know, sense of belonging, you know, uh, not being worthy of, of, you know, being loved by another human being. Uh, my dad and my mom were uh, divorced early in my early childhood so a latino with divorced parents yeah man that's weird that's man. regular i know <laughs> i know i know trust me I, I know. that's I like know. that's like the end thing oh okay no problem next you know that's like uh swipe right Topacio or no. rosa savaya you know yeah. those soap operas and my mom was like oh, that's why you, you you're setting the intention you watch all that bullshit and that's what happens yeah you know? but i remember the arguments and i remember you know, oh man i don't know i was a young little morsel you know i was uh i what remember i remember because uh, the abuse they took it out on on us you know really aggressive abuse behavior and it was just like oh my god what do you do you know and then you got to add the alcoholism the drinking and the, stuff that and uh, on top of it which was you know i was like hmm and it's partly the reason why i don't drink but I was also guided You're drinking drink. water. Yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's good, high quality. Yeah. It's too actually low. vodka, guys. We drink. Uh, no, no, okay. but that's why you don't drink. No, so it's so white lightning. That's right. So you haven't drank your whole life, or I did. Just <sighs> too many bad nights. Not because I was, you know, felt the craving. I have never had the craving to drink alcohol. I say, hey, let's go get a six pack. Hey, chorlos, you know, let's yeah. do it. You know, sit on the street uh, and drink. I only it. did it just to appease my friends. Yeah. Which was like, hey, I wanted to fit in. Like I said, social. You, know. you were a social. Yeah, yeah. So I went through all this trauma and I, just, I was just left. Basically, I'd come home. I didn't go to school. I hated my life because my, my, uh, my parents, like I said, were divorced early. We, my my dad won custody of us, and he was an artist. Wow. Very successful artist. That, that's tough. He, I mean, he came back from Vietnam, and my, and my mom was pregnant with somebody else's baby. What would you do? Yeah. She goes, I was lonely. You know, Latina yeah, yeah. alone for six years? <laughs> mm. Yeah. You know, and that's like, you know, she Probably said that. that. But then she, we didn't think that my stepbrother was our stepbrother you know we thought he was real uh, i mean we yeah, <laughs> thought it was our yeah, real yeah you didn't think it was, it was your half brother yeah yeah so that it was your full blood i i was really upset when that day i remember she came over and told us when he was 16 16 years old and i was just like, why even say it at that point yeah. why even say it you know we always had some kind of you know it, it always occurred to us like no something's wrong my sister did she left yeah, so I can't handle this. The favoritism, you know. I mean, I would like, <laughs> I would be grounded all the time because this motherfucker here was trying to get away with all this shit, and he shot somebody in the head one day and with a BB gun, and he blamed it on me. So you, you start that sentence off with the BB gun first next time. Yeah, with the BB gun, he shot somebody in the head. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Luckily, you didn't hit the eye or something. I know. Dude, was it somebody you guys knew or just a neighbor or just a, a neighbor stranger? who was a police explorer? Mm. And they confiscated all my dad's guns because of that. <sighs> por, por la pendejadas. Yeah. So I got blamed for it and I sat in my room for. And how does that happen? How do, how do you get blamed for something and not say, fuck, no, that wasn't. Well, he man. felt sorry for him. Was he older or younger? He was younger. He was younger. But he felt sorry. And he blamed his older brother? My br my stepbrother, his name is Andy. <laughs> You're probably going to watch this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cabron, you got to talk about Fucking me. Fucking me. I thought uh, it was we swore. But, it, you know, we Promise. were always fighting. We were yeah. always. Like, like brothers. Like, that, that's normal. I mean, like, 
I mean, brutal. Yeah, yeah. Brutal peeing on stuff, each other, you know? throwing ketchup, uh, fighting. No, him. it's worse than that. Oh. Blood. Like, the whole hallways were like. ¿Qué, qué es la diferencia en edad? What's the age difference? Um, four years. Four years. Okay. Yeah, that's a, my older brother's yeah. five. I remember the last time we got, in, it was such a bloody mess. His friend didn't want to intervene because he was on PCP at the time because he, he went nuts after my mom told him he was on drugs all the time and he broke my nose. Yeah, you can't win. I fight. was going to hit a bottle over his head, but I didn't want to kill him. Or I didn't You weren't going to kill him. He was probably going to kill you after that. Maybe. No, but that that's what PCP is, man. There's no stop. I went to, I, I used to I used to work at a club when I was like fucking I don't even want to say how old because it was illegal, but uh, I used to work at a nightclub and it was a, a place in San Jose, the Rodeo, and then they would have like música norteña, yeah, yeah, fucking crazy, that. and man, they would get fucking crazy. And this guy was on PCP, and like three of us couldn't take this guy down. And the only way they were able to take him down is there, there used to be a San Jose detective that he retired. He went and he took off his jacket. This is if you fight anybody on PCP, guys. You're not going to win the fight. What what this guy did was he creeped up behind him and he grabbed his jacket and put it over his head and pulled him back and just kept him like that in the dark inside the jacket. And the guy swang, 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 and then he just started panicking and then he started screaming because he didn't know where he was at or what was happening. That's the only way you're going to deal with that. But you would have hit him with a bottle. You, you, you probably wouldn't even be here today. Well, I did fight back. Yeah. And... And that's why you got your no, nose fucking I, broken. And no, after the fact, um, I, it's hard. I, I hit him on the temple mm. at the time I was taking boxing stuff, and and, and uh, it knocked him out partially. So um, I went one way out the door. The the whole place was a bloody mess. The his friend called the the cops. You know, your house or the paramedics, and they rushed us both to the hospital. My dad came home and he was just like, what the hell? Mm. So he separated us. <clears throat> and um, you would think that with all that that has happened, you know, um, you would never speak again. But I'm really close to him now. You know, it's uh, we forgive and forget. And part of the journey that I went through is is to forgive and understand why it happened. Um but that inner child that I went through at that part of that time of my life was so affected. Uh, I would try to educate and teach people and mentor those that are also have those situations, you know, in their lives where they need that. And it's hard to bring up. Some people don't want to deal with it. So I was saying, if you're coming to this earth new, your spirit and soul are new. You're going to be a little bit vulnerable. Mostly insecure, not confident, going to be reckless. So they, they, those types of spirits, they attach, and souls, they attach to, like, nurturing souls. Mama, you know, they want mama to take care of them. So yeah. you see it, and I can identify it, because there's a lot. And I see a, a lot of that, especially in, in, the, in the Harley world. You know, I see it, the bikers, you know. Badass, you know, the, the whole mentality of them, you know, they've been through some shit, you know, and they they cover themselves with, with with this machoism, but really they're suffering inside. They they're afraid to speak out. They've been through some hard stuff, you know. So and I identified that with a couple of people I've actually mentored before, and so I, I chose th this path for a reason, just to help them. You know, so you did it for yourself and you're coaching people now. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, I, I, I swear that just like in the last year, last year, last two years, I'm realizing how much programming, you know, my, my mother and, and my, my surroundings growing up put into my fucking head and how much controlling of. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't go here. Don't go there. Don't be late. Be get a job. Get this. You have to do it like this. You have to do it like that. Be afraid of police officers. Like th there's so much download that that they put in a child's head. It's ridiculous. And now I'm I'm 40, and now I'm like, fuck, man. I could have done this, 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 and that, but I didn't because I was under the impression that it wasn't accepted. You know, like like that. I was I was 
I, I, I felt cheated. But that was that your parents' influence, or was it everything? Your- no, no, that's everything. I'm talking about like, when you raise in when you're raised in a in a bad neighborhood. You know, the the neighborhood you start seeing like, hey, you got to be like like cops are dicks. And when when you live in a shitty neighborhood, cops are dicks because their their are. life is more. <laughs> All over, too. But in Beverly Hills, they're not going to be dicks. Or, in like, you know, certain areas, they're going to be nice. But when you live, like, in Canoga Park, you know, and, and, and you have gangs shooting at each other, you know, like, that, that's a bad environment. Schools, you know, they teach you, like, you know, the D.A.R.E. programs. Don't do drugs. You know, marijuana will, will yeah, that's fry your brain. Yeah, that, that's programming. But I, I never realized how much of it worked until recently where i'm like breaking away from all this shit where i'm like dude fuck this like you know i I, like i'm so worried about everybody else and what they think you know because i was programmed that way that now i'm like dude i gotta live my life man because it's stressful to always think about there was a point in my 20s that if a cop was behind me, yo temblaba. I was like, what the fuck? There's a, they're they're going to they're gonna take me away from my family. They're going <laughs> to tow my car. They're going to take away my money. Like, it, it, was, it, was, it, it was devastating how fucking crazy they, they, they try to put that image in there. Right. You know? And I, now I'm like, fuck this, man. Like, Did you watch the news when you were younger? Did your parents watch it? My parents would watch it and shit like that. That's where it all comes from, man. Well, that that's what I'm saying. It's it's all it's all a, a government. Like yeah. I'm telling you, it's the schools. It was the dare programs. It was the neighborhood you're raised in. It's the you know it, all the outlets, mm-hmm. and and you had no access to other information. But it, it's amazing. Like I said, that at this age of my life, I'm like, oh, I was programmed this whole time. I was being manipulated the whole fucking time, and I'm barely catching on now. Mm-hmm. And now it's like where I'm trying to break all these fucking records and and have these conversations and do the things that i thought wouldn't socially be accepted now that it's being super welcomed Mm. you know what i mean yeah so that's that's good you're mentoring people and and same thing like what you're talking about the fucking the bikes you know or or bikers or you're not even just bikers but serial killers anything it's a trauma that people deal with and i'm sorry it's a trauma people have faced and they don't know how to deal with it right and what they end up doing is they just repeat it and if, if, if you were raised with a father beating up your mom, now you're this dude beating up women, right. you know, and you don't know why you do it. You just think it's a fucking pattern, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, that's a sore subject. <laughs> What's that? Not, not yeah. that I've done it, yeah, but yeah. Um, I've been in situations. <laughs> well, it's, it, it's a sore subject. <laughs> exactly. Like, <laughs> we won't get into that. Yeah. Yeah, but it, but it exists, and that's usually right. the, the case. And the point is, is that, that there's not enough outlets to teach people that that's one that's not accepted. Yes, you grew up with it, but that's not accepted. That's not normal. Mm-hmm. Just because you were, so th- there, there's no way of breaking it. You know, the only way you break it is if there's some other male figure that intervenes in your life and guides you into a different path and shows you a different path. Right. But I'll say this: if if your father used to beat up your mom, more than likely you listening to this probably beat up your wife now you know and 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 now it's a little different because of the social media and the access of information and people can now see so many other things but at least that was the case for the last few thousand years mm-hmm. or probably all the way until the last 50 years you know right um i can't say that i've ever hit a woman um but i see my dad hit my mom a few times you know but my mom fought back too yeah. So, you know, she was a, she was a fighter, um, which is brave because I, a lot of women back in the days were, were all the odds were against her. Yes. A woman would call the cops. My husband beat her, beat me up and the cops would be like, uh, okay, so what? Don't mom, bother us with this. My mom was, Sir, you good? Good. Okay. She's don't, a don't fighter. Bother us. Yeah. I get all, I get a lot of my spiritualism from her. My dad, not so much. I mean, he, he would laugh about my, my journey. He's like, oh no, you got to go to church. And like, no. I only found something that actually fulfills me, man. And like I said, I've tried everything. I went to, you know, newborn Christian and went and all that stuff. I studied the religion for a while. I'm all looking at it. It's like, wait, this Bible has been re- written six times, rewritten, King James version. Yeah. So, <clears throat> um, and I'm probably get a lot of people, you know, calling me up and say, hey, you know, you got to. 
invoke Jesus into your life. And Jesus. I've done my research. I've actually. And um, isn't it funny that how you always only see him as a baby and an adult, but you never see him as a child? Because w- what kind of food did he like? Did he play? Well, the Bible, there, there's, there's, I believe, 18 years in the Bible that his, there's zero record. He disappeared. For 18 years, he disappeared. Yeah. So there, there is no picture or image or no. word spoken or anything said. So that's why. And, and then and you I'm got Mary Magdalena. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Who's this side bitch you got, bro? Come on, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, what are you doing? Yeah. And my grandfather was named Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. Um, and my grandfather, too. Really? Yeah. Hey, Jesus. there we go. <laughs> What? We have the same grant? What? <laughs> no, that's not. That's yeah. Not. Anyway, you'd be a lot taller. Yeah, yeah. Damn it. Because he's part Native what American. What a dick, dude. On my <laughs> show. You hear this, guys? Oh. Look at this guy. Come on. <laughs> anyway, um, but that whole side of <laughs> with was, was one reason why I wanted to find out. Yeah. And I've actually done research that I couldn't find anything. And there's philosophers in those times that never really heard of this person. Yeah. You know, not to say, and I'm probably going to offend a lot of people, but that's just the reality, man. What yeah. I've discovered, you got to go way deep and it hurts. Yeah. It's like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go against the grain here. And am I going to, is something going to, uh, lightning going to come down and am I, am I sinning? No, it's not going to happen. Well, here's here, here here's the thing. Today's August 29th. This this is going to be released probably in a week or two from now. But today's eight, August 29th. That's not August 29th. July 29th. <laughs> I'm like wait 2022. A okay. Okay. Do, do you know what that date represents? No. Do you know what 8-29-2022 means? It means that um, what what happened. <laughs> 2022 years ago. Tell me, enlighten. The beginning of the earth? Oh. The solar system? Okay. The galaxy? The What What happened in 2000, 2022 years? Why are we all counting this number together? Next year's 2023. <laughs> Next year's 2024. What happened 2022 years ago? The Big Bang. No, man. The Big Bang was four billion <laughs> years ago. Four billion know, years ago. Know, Our species has been around for over 100,000 right, years right. in this force. So, so you, you know what's 2,022 years ago? Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus Christ. So the whole world decided to... Louis C.K. has a bit on this that he fucking kills. It's so hilarious. But the whole world is, is counting together 2001, 2000. 1993, 94, and it's been 2022 years. So it's weird because it's like, again, to Louis C.K.'s point, the Christians won. They won. <laughs> like, yeah. like, they won. We're all using their calendar. That's, that's so weird. That thing's still flying there. And I, I can't, and like I said, I don't know, I, I don't get into that because I that's, that doesn't resonate with me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, but my, my point is, is that it goes 2022 years ago. Right. And, and if you look at the Big Bang, I think the Big Bang was 4 billion years ago. The whole galaxy existence that they calculate is 13 billion years old. So, right. and it's, it's been growing ever since, and it's still growing. Right. That's fucking wild. So it was the date when he was resurrected or when he was born? B.C. Or oh, uh, A.C. Okay. After Christ. Okay. So once once he so died, was, yeah, that, that's the boom. That that that's that. Oh <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the big boom, boom. Jesus came. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. I mean, it's funny because <clears throat> our society went. Oh, I saw Jesus. You know, it was an image. Well, that's my pancake. Just, on my pancake. It's a, an inscription in I, your head because I was you, making breakfast. Yeah, I remember. This. And I put the butter. And I saw La Virgen. Right. Yeah, I remember the La pancake. Vir- yeah, that was there was a, a pancake. There was a soup. There was a shirt. There was everything. Oh, what else was and it? People. Oh, and the tail light. I remember that one. On, the, on a truck or something, yeah. right? Yeah, as a car or something. <laughs> but this is all programmed. Yeah, it, it, our subconscious. <clears throat> when you go from childhood learning about this 
until your adult period of time is just programmed in your head. Of yeah, course, you're it's all programmed. It. It's all downloaded. So it's a, a programming and controlling right. of the population. <laughs> but if you start invoking your inner uh, and higher self, everything changes. It shifts because you have control of what affects you. And you have control of your emotions. When you say spiritual, because automatically people start assuming mushrooms, marijuana, ayahuasca, oh, that's, DMT. That's I, I understand. <laughs> I understand. That, that, that's what I'm saying. So when you're saying spiritual, you're talking about just mind, body, soul, no substance spirit. of any source. Uh, mind, spirit, soul, no substance of any sort. You're talking about straight up meditating and just... Connecting to your higher self means that you're in a state of consciousness. Um, <clears throat> usually it means that you're grounded. Grounding helps us because uh, we can identify our emotions better, people's behaviors better. Being present, right? Yeah, so that's really important. Um, and you have some earth and heaven in you. So you're able to have a little bit of both like myself. I'm Explain that. More earth. Yeah, but earth we're beings we're are basically um, of the earth. <clears throat> They're not of the world. It's a spiritual mind, See, but mindset, consciousness. Where someone is more heaven, they're airy. They come from, like, there's different parts. Like, uh, Lumerian is where I, you know, it's a dimension, uh, a place where we call uh, the higher self, right? Or a higher place. And so the Lemurians are very sensitive people. They put themselves in a vulnerable state. And typically with a with an air person, they have lighter eyes. And earth people have darker eyes because they represent the earth. So air and water, you know, all the elements. Yeah. So earth, the, wind, water, uh, fire. Yeah. So basically you have those types of people. Or heaven People from uh, different um, spiritual realms, um, like heaven energy, they're here to learn grounding. And so it's essential for them. Otherwise, they'll be stressed out, lack of focus. Um, they have a hard time paying attention, like ADD and stuff ADD, like that. ADD, ADHD. Yeah, but that can also happen to Earth. But with Earth, if you're not present, you get clumsy. And you lose train of thought. And it's very Focus. typical of, of Earth being be, not being present, especially if their pineal gland, the third eye, is blocked. That little tiny gland, which represents our consciousness, our higher state of mind, is very key. And these days, it's, it's blocking our mindset. Or it's keeping us from evolving. So that... Uh, if you go back to uh, Egyptology, <clears throat> the Eye of Ra, you see it sideways. That is referencing our pineal gland. That is the actual pineal gland because they figured it out. That's how we program people. That's how we influence them. That's how we manipulate them. So all those slaves, that's how they controlled them. And it goes from another spectrum. So I had a <clears throat> cousin of mine recently go to Egypt, and uh, I was actually really jealous because I've always wanted to go to Egypt and uh, look at the pyramids. And what I've done, um, uh, I'm for my intuition and my spiritual practice, I believe that those were magnetic um, uh, charging stations for sending a signal to uh, life forms from different planets. There was a guy that actually, um, I, don't, I, won't, I don't know his name, but um, these same replica, uh, replica uh, pyramids were on the moon, on the back side, on the dark side of the moon. They found them. So I believe that we've actually found these and did an exploration up in the 60s and 70s and, and discovered them. And found, we found something. Yeah, and they're not telling us. Do, do you know why the dark side of the moon is dark? <laughs> but no, do you, do you know why? No, it's not a joke. Like, like, do you know why? Like, it's not orbiting with the Earth. It, we're, we're looking at its polar, and it's a satellite. 
Well, with one, it's a satellite, of course. It's man-made. It is a it's not even real, obviously. <laughs> Duh. Like, and there's fucking... We know that. And two, <laughs> the, the, the Earth spins like this, right? right? So you have the polar here, south, North Pole, South Pole. The moon, we're not seeing it like this. We're seeing the moon yeah, on its orbits. polar. Right. So it spins like this, but the backside, we never get to see. So we're always looking at the top right. of the moon or the bottom of the moon. It orbits that, with Earth. And, and that's why they call that the dark side of the moon. And people don't get that. Yeah, there's videos. There's been video, video leakages of, of giants living on the fucking moon. You know, pyramids completely built. And it's, it's, been, it's been a huge mystery that there was there was a race to the moon for years mm -hmm. because the idea between Russia and United States was the first people that get to the moon will conquer the world because they'll build a base, they'll put weapons of mass destruction, and whoever can conquer the moon first will conquer the earth. But I don't believe they did that. Well, well, actually, there's they were there's raced to go see what the hell that was. Well, that, that's that's another thing. <laughs> the, the alien te technology. I, I, I think they did see some alien technology. Something happened. They saw something because yeah. guess what? As soon as they landed, all the talks were over. They were like, uh, "Let's look at Mars." Like, like nobody wanted to talk about it anymore, you know. Right. But they, they talk about bases. There's vid there's videos of giants. There's videos of uh, in the dark side of the moon pyramids, or not, not not like our pyramids, but like other blocks. Like it's it's a mystery. But go ahead. Well, I the reason why I brought that up is because um, you can channel um, higher evolved uh, spirits, which can be alien too. Um, I've channeled a, a few of them, and uh, in my practice, um, it's a wide spectrum of different uh, energy practices like uh not just spiritualism mind body spirit but i can do frequency healing um i do entity possession removal um, energy possession wow yeah entity entity any yeah. got it so we do um <clears throat> medical medium and when i say we it's because i connect to to spirit guides or others like i can connect to yours so if you're having cancer for example um, I can go in, even before it's diagnosed and before you knew it, I can lay you down on the table and actually put crystals on you that actually help me to balance your chakras because I need to do that before I read you and take a pendulum, which is a, is a powerful crystal that I can go in and see if you have these. And I've done it many times. And the first time I did it, I was really excited I got I got goosebumps. I'm like, oh my god, I'm really helping somebody. You know, I'm finding it. This power is coming to me. So I had to channel that energy all the time in doing it. How it started was I was running amok, man. I was like, going, I was going crazy. I was really angry. I was fighting all the time. I went out, pull people out of their cars and beat them up. From just excessive anger. I was I had a really bad temper. I didn't care who you were. I would fight you. And I would, I mean, I have scars to prove that. And it was just nasty. And one day my thumb was hanging down. I was running in the middle of a state college. And my thumb was just from a knife that was about to go on my neck. And uh, it was hanging off my my thumb. And I didn't really realize it until the cop was like, are you okay? You need some help? So no, you can take care of that dude, though. And he was he stabbed because it was either me or him, you know. So... Yeah, self defense. Um, I just was it was brutal, you know. So I didn't like that, and and I used this uh, power to kind of like um, shift my consciousness. And so I met somebody, and I believe she was an angel represent, re representing uh, the higher realm. And she came in, and she, hey, I'm guided to do something for you. Would you come and lay it down on this table? And she put crystals on me the first time. And I'm like, all right. I was like, but you got to be open to receive this. You're like, she's Are hot. <laughs> she's hot. Fuck it. Whatever. Now she was older. Yeah. And I think because if she was I'm younger yeah, yeah, yeah. and she had the, you know, the nice nuggetas and the chichotas, I wouldn't yeah. do it, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, come on, let's You're go. Like, I'm going to put my crystal on you. <laughs> <laughs> 
Guess look what I brought over oh, here. No. Put your hand in my pocket. Look at exactly. Oh, oh, what's what crystal what's, is that? that? <laughs> I thought you said there was crystals. Uh, I thought you said your name was Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> so it was. I didn't, serious, guys. I didn't this take is, it seriously yeah. at the fr- in the beginning, you and can. I actually laughed. It's hard, yeah. You know, I was like, okay, are you willing to do it? So she had to do it twice because the first time it was like, you know, I'm like nervous. You know, what is this girl going to do to me? You know, I was like, what am I doing? I was like, I'm inviting like, a trap. Are you going to yeah. take my soul? You're going to fucking steal you my know, car? <laughs> so that's what well, happened. Yeah. I was nervous and I was sweating like crazy. So she did these crystals. And honestly, man, the, the, the first time she put one on me, I felt different. And, yeah. and then by the time it was done, I fell asleep. And then I started bawling. I stood crying, man. I just felt this huge release, this burden. Apparently, emotions. All my my root chakra, my my sacral, my these are the auric fields. There's seven, really eight. But I'll explain to you what they represent. Um, and they start from the, the root chakra is lower, and it starts from your higher crown. Your third eye is important. Throat, heart chakra, sacral, um, and. Um, what happened was all of them were out. They were all shifted, which was my behaviors. I couldn't invite the, you know, grounding. I would just run amok and just go crazy. And so she grounded me. I was like, what is this? I'm like, I was able to breathe. I was able to sleep better. And so she did it again. <clears throat> She goes, I'm guided to do this and again. the third time. I go, who's telling you this? She goes, hire of all spirits, you know, angels. So I'm like, huh. So she, what she did the second time, she gave me the gift. She helped me download from what I already knew in other lifetimes because she said that I had this power. We're like, what power? Yeah. Am I a superhero? Am I going to fly? Am I going to do some things? She told me that I had a <clears throat> Archangel Gabriel energy. So that I'm able to channel and, and do these things. I'm a powerful healer. I'm like, okay. Mm. It was really hard for me to absorb all that. But now that I get it and I'm doing the work, it's different. Yeah. I can honestly tell you that being a medical intuitive, I can go into someone's body and I can actually tell you everything about them, what traumas that they had. I can go into a restaurant I can go anywhere, and I can tell you all about that person if I tap in. That's crazy. And it's exhausting, let me tell you. Oh, I'm sure. And I was like, hey, you know, I'm just practicing. My first time just getting familiar with it. This dude was next to me eat, drinking Diet Coke and uh, some meal he was eating. I'm like, what are you eating, dude? That's nasty nitrates. I'm like... <laughs> Yeah, it's like a <laughs> microwave burrito. And I'm looking at it, and then I, I, I've, I looked, and I saw his heart explode, literally. I, I was like, okay. So I, I went up to him. <clears throat> this is the first time. I didn't know what to do with his energy because you don't approach people. You know, you have to. They have to be open to receive it. I go, do you have? Uh, excuse me, but you know, I don't know how to tell you this, but you, you have heart issues. Like, how do you know that? And he got really defensive. You know, it's like. I'm trying to eat here. You know, talk about that. And it just came back from the hospital. So like, but I was telling him, you know, that literally he's going to have a heart attack. I just came out of the hospital with heart issues. And how do you know all this stuff? And so he got really defensive. Should have been like, I fucked your wife before you came. <laughs> <laughs> she told me. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm fucking kidding. Oh my God. I can't get it up no more. That fucking weak hearted hey, motherfucker. You, you need I'm a kidding. crystal, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> That's <laughs> that was like messed up. I <laughs> so he I, no no because I because I I trust me I I I'm into this like I'm into this like yeah but that's why my mind just wanders. Like, know, this, this is mahogany obsidian. This is a this is beautiful. Very grounding. That's my next piece. I also do wire wrapping jewelry because I don't like to hold things in my pocket, so I like to flash them. That's badass. So let's put it here. What happened was, I said okay. Praying to my angels, <laughs> praying. Yeah, sorry. I said, look, let's invite the people that resonate with my vibration. Uh, I only want to attract those that yeah. really feed my the frequency that I have to give them. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it worked. 
So that ever since then, that's all I do. Because I can't just go up to people. You can't. And I go They're to these ready for concerts it. and no. a lot of these bike biker events and stuff. And I see the, oh, my God, this person... What are you doing? Trouble, I, yeah. I feel like telling them, but I can't, and they're not open to receive it. So I just, you know, that, that that's like uh, that, exhausting. That's like one of those, um, you know, the, the the things you watch in the movies with the time travelers, and it's like don't fucking talk to anybody because like they're not ready for that information. Mm-hmm. You know, they're they're not. You have to no. avoid contact at all cost. Yeah, and this is why I focus on. Aligning my chakras so that I can respond, yeah, instead of react to other people's human behaviors. Because if you're not grounded, then you react. Right. This is a stone. You can't touch it. But this is a stone. Oh, that's beautiful. This is. Lab- I've never seen anything like that. It's labradorite. I don't know if anyone can see the flashiness in there. Yeah, that that that's yeah. It, it it's uh, reflective, like a, it's like a translucent. This is my stone. This is my home. This is my galaxy right here. That's amazing. And this right here represents the auric field. In it. And it, um, you can align your chakras like instant, instantly with this. And I like to carry it because it makes me feel good. And then everybody always says, hey, you know, I don't need a rock. You know, it's not that. These are semi-precious stones. They still hold uh, uh, some integrity of metaphysical powers you know yeah and they're implements of our power that's why they're here you know these all represent their uh, their accents of our power and they're here to help us tune you know so uh, a lot of them like selenite which is like 500 million years old yeah the neighbors <laughs> um 500 million years old that stone and kyanite, which is the two that. What is going on there? This is the two that I love the most and I use a lot in my spiritualism. Maybe I get mad because we're talking about. No, yeah. We the, talk about Jesus. fucking <laughs> demons trying to get in here like. We <laughs> 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 Jesus. <laughs> we heard you talking. Him. Why did you say. <laughs> Chico, get him. Get him. Sick him. Sick him. What is that? Sick him. What is that? So I, 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 I thank you for protecting. Um, I use the selenite a lot in my healing sessions. Um, selenite holds no negative forces. It's it's made up of water, crystallized water from 500 million years old. Yeah. And so I use it to charge my crystals. Um, I when I use it in my sessions, honestly. I have, when I have headaches or if I have a headache or someone that has a headache or sore throat, I put it up next to it and it goes away. You know, it's it's not the placebo effect. It's not the intention exactly. These crystals have powers. And if you enact them and you engage them and, and activate them, they serve a purpose. Like I wear a Labradorite here and then I have some here. Hematite, obsidian, and Tiger's Eye, all about balance. And this is um, Muakite, which is basically an anti-aging. You know, it helps to revitalize the cells. And then you believe all that stuff. I know it's crazy. And a lot of people think, oh, my God, you know, it's, this is all no, like no, crazy. It, no, it, some people think it's crazy. And some, right. pe- some people think... I need more than Going outside's rock. crazy. <laughs> like I mean, that you, you can't you can't understand that. And I have some on my bike. Do you do you have well people? I I, I think it's been tradition for a very long time. People put some good luck charms on their bike, like you, you know, for Harley, it's the bell. Bell. I have it up you front know. there. You can see. Yeah, it. people always do that. But it wasn't enough. Yeah. No, no. I mean, people don't stop at just the bell. Multiple. For example, when people are touching your bike and it's they're having some issues in their life. Right, I was just thinking up. about that with the fucking rock. I, I was just thinking, I was, I was gonna tell you, like, don't you get like people's problems when you're touching their rocks? You can, and and are you gonna go around saying I touched your rock now? But see, that's a grounding. Yeah, so good, and you know that I have good energy, so I, yeah, yeah. the intention is good. Yeah, it's when people are corrupted, and so the and then they have entities too that that the crystal could come in and actually disguise. Entities can come in and disguise themselves as conscious beings, and, and they can attack you. Anytime you lower your vibration, you're susceptible. 
lowering your vibration can consist of numbing the senses. And when you numb the senses, that's when they attack you the most. Mm. When you drink, when you take a pill, when you smoke weed, all that stuff. Even when you smoke weed or mushrooms and all anything, that stuff? Any psychedelics, anything you do, this is they know that this but is it's your fun. weakness. Yeah, but it's, but it's, it's fun. Not, it's I not know, you that's I doing know. it. It's yeah. them. They want your soul and spirit. But but where 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 is the like I've I've always had this thought that Back to like what I was telling you about, like the the parenting and then the system and the controlling and you know don't do this, don't do that. And, and I I feel like that's a fake version of us. And I, and I do feel in some instances, Why do you say that? well, because if you're raised that the police is this and the government's this, and you need to get a job and you need to work forty fifty dollars hours a week because that's normal, and anything outside of that's not normal. And when you're brainwashed with all this garbage, thinking that's the only way to live your life, when there's billions of ways of to live your life, when you're limited, and and that's your you have to dress with a tie and a collared shirt. Like right now, it's free. Now we're cool. Your parents' I, influence. I understand that, but what I'm saying is, is I feel that many people are like that are raised in a certain way where they're in this controlled environment. Mm -hmm. You know, there's people that look at you and me on motorcycles and be like, oh my God, on a motorcycle? That's so irresponsible and so dangerous. dangerous. (laughs) Oh my God, I knew somebody who died on a motorcycle. Like, (laughs) shut the fuck up. Like, I knew somebody died standing up. You know, whatever. I knew somebody died of old age, whatever the fucking case is. But my point is, is that when you drink or smoke weed, and again, I'm not promoting neither. Like, I've cut back. I, 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 I stopped smoking. Cigarettes, you know, uh, I cut back on the drinking only on a few shows and smoke stuff weed? like that. Very uh, rarely, very honest. rarely. Okay. No, no, I, I smoke weed probably four times a month, you know, and, and I want to smoke more, to be honest. I really do. Like, there, there's a part of me that says I should be smoking weed at least four times a week. I swear. Uh, but my point is, is that I think that's the real you. When, when you get that little buzz, when you get that little high, pero montigo, pero montigo, chico, chico. When you get that little buzz and you get that little high and you just drop this, I don't have to worry about what the neighbors are going to think or what the person across the street or what my boss is going to say or what anybody's going to judge me for. When you drop those guards down and you feel fucking relaxed, like I think that's the real person. It's not. No. Those are the entities. They're controlling you. Those are the ones that are are attacking your emotions. And what I just did a talk on on weed marijuana because it's it's a huge sub- subject that and I'm like a lot of people don't really like to hear it but it's bad you know uh, and you see it being more of an influence on younger kids because oh, it's an easier way to control them you know and to corrupt their minds yeah dumb them down what what marijuana does specifically not just lowers the vibration but you're actually it deleting the dopamine and serotonin, which you need those beautiful hormones to sustain your emotions. Any any type of drug, alcohol does it too. Any psychedelic, any LC, L, what is it? LCD. LCD. L- <laughs> LSD. You, you, said, Come you on. tricked me, man. What do you put in this? Come on, man. What's going I got on? You. <laughs> The LCDs, yeah, Samson LCDs, yeah. yeah. When you do the fuck, even TV is a, a type of brainwashing or, or emotional numbness. Well, you don't necessarily have to do drugs to lower your vibration. You can be in a, an emotional state, yeah, which I was, and that was my rock bottom. You know, um, so any kind of numbing the senses or unnaturally or inebriation, but isn't we fact, natural? Like the, 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 so it's get, caffeine, but it, you get adrenal fatigue. If you get adrenal fatigue, what happens? You yeah. get you get uh, thyroid issues. You know. You see, my, my my thing with weed that, that that I will agree with you on this, and and dude, I I don't smoke much weed at all. Like I really don't. But but when I do, I feel and it's fucking okay. Great. I'm not here to judge you. Yeah, man. yeah, no, no. But when I do, I feel great, man. And this is why I'm not even kidding. I feel like I should be smoking at least for every podcast. But um, my my point is. I see. I got to smoke some weed. My problem with weed right now is, is they're making it so fucking crazy right now. I mean, there's people they're making weed that's like fucking purple, 
with red like that. It's called Chico Boom or something. <laughs> and it's it's like what is it? Fifty percent uh, THC. Girl Scout cookies. I mean, they got everything. Like you got wedding cake, Girl Scout cookies. They got you got Indica, and, Yeah, you got you, know, you got hybrid. Yeah, but they're 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 so strong and potent that like you take one fucking hit and you're just you're just dumb afterwards. You're drooling right. and and all you want to do is eat pizza and fucking right. Dr Pepper. Right. And you know. So and, and that that's a problem. But I'm talking about like if you get like you know organic, good fuck. Like anything, we we nobody we, does that. Why do you think In and Out so good? Have you been to an In and Out at night? You you, you look at the just half of those man. people. Yeah, are buzzed, which is great. Chick Fil A, all that stuff. It's it's great because as soon as they opened up, uh, raising that, canes. Have you been there? That dark energy, which is attached to marijuana, it's a dark energy, mm. and it's attached to it. So if you sell it or if you do any kind of something with even CBD, which is we're discovering, um, you know, my research that CBD actually affects the liver. It goes right to the liver and it affects it. Depending how you consume it, but yeah. Anytime. Well, uh, if it you goes do there first. If you do edibles, it's a, if you do edibles, it goes straight to the liver. If you do the rubbing, like for an injury, that doesn't go straight it's to the liver. It still does. If you smoke it. It has to go because it has to filter through it. Anything. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know about. Yeah, I don't know enough to. So, rebuttal um, you. But basically, back to weed. The m- number one thing that it does is it changes your brain chemistry. Um, to the point where you lose that uh, serotonin and dopamine, which you need. Okay, and you wonder why people are in such a depressed state. You know, because when they smoke that's weed? what weed does. It. it it, it well, keeps I see you people depressed. smoke weed. I see people happy, man. Yeah, be, because like, like, they like, don't like, know like, anything different. Like if, if, it's if, not them anymore. The weed is controlling them no, to the point, man. Like, like I, I, I play guessing games and word games, and we, we do these challenges, and and you know, it, it's it's like a fucking event, and the the amount of bonding and laughing during these, like, we'll we'll grab a topic and just be like, uh, okay, the, grab an item. Uh, what's this? And then you're like, oh, it's a boob, you know? And they're like, <laughs> what's this? And, oh, beep, boop, pop, I'm fucking alien. Like, you know, like we play this game. And we'll do, yeah, go ahead, you see? You play, oh, it's a water bottle, no, good job. Them, <laughs> you know, but but we interact and bond and, and, and like, give credit to each other. Like, that was a good one, and that was hilarious. And let's but try you this. can do that without it. But, but it's see, not as funny. But um, why? Because... Because, for example, like one of the one of the guys that, that I hang out with a, a lot, uh, you know, he fucking works a lot, man. He's got a crazy schedule, and when he's off, his brain is still. He's not present. Mm. He's not present. Well, he's let me still, ask you this: He's sitting in front of me, but he's still at Does the he office. Love his job. No. Okay, then. No, but it, it's, it's, it's hold on. It's it's his business. <laughs> it's his business. You know, it's not a job. It's his business. It's what he. It's what pay, it brings bread and butter to the mm. family. I you think know, a lot of people bills. that that, um, in my experience, the ones that I've known that smoke weed are compensating. Um, and then well, there there are those too. There are know, people that fucking hit it hard. Look, I I don't think I think there's too was much a study. of anything is not good for you. Of course, man. Of course. I think they said, look, people shouldn't even smoke weed till they're t- twenty three to twenty five years old. Mm-hmm. Okay, you smoke before that, you're you're, you're 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 you have a developing mind and brain. You are fucking with that development. Smoking weed anytime earlier than that. After that, you're not gonna get the crazy addictions. Like there is the potheads that you're talking about that are just fucking numb to everything. And, and but and, it's a gateway. You right. have to understand. No, that. it's not a gateway. Of that, that's, it is. that's that's bullshit. Oh, no. that, that's bullshit. That's bullshit. That that I call <laughs> bullshit all day. I know. I know. I know people that smoked weed <laughs> their whole life and they've never done anything. It is a other gateway than that. for a lot of things, my friend. I I disagree with that. Okay. I, I really. I we really can do. agree to disagree. Yeah, but it is yeah. a gateway. Number a gateway to what? Other drugs or bad habits? Like all to kinds what? of things. I can name a list of things that are gateways of bad things. It just I, I, it opens I, I, up I, I that can. whole dark side of that where it where you these entities can come in and then control your mind. Now with ayahuasca, that's a whole different ballgame. Right, but it's very similar to marijuana because with ayahuasca, 
that is attached also. There's conscious beings that are attached to it. Yeah. Because they know people are going to try to fix their inner self. All right. And then what they want to do is these energies come in. As soon as this person engages in that psychedelic behavior, then it traps them. It dumbs them down and brings them down even lower. Okay. But I, I think that comes into a quality thing. You know, I, I really do. Because, for example, years ago, you would hear about ayahuasca and it was just life. It, it, it was it was life changing experiences and you, you found the true self and blah, 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 blah. Now I had a buddy of mine that just went to Colombia and he did ayahuasca. He says there was like a tour bus and it was a tour package and everybody got to do it together and he didn't feel anything and it was dog shit and the quality of it just just terrible. And that's just one example of that one was weak. But then there's other people that make it super strong and super taboo and they give it to somebody that's never had this trip and they have really bad trips and it's back to the weed. Now they're making weed so potent that, the, yeah, this newer stuff's fucking crazy and somebody that's never smoked weed or doesn't smoke weed regularly shouldn't smoke that. But there is stuff that's normal, that's kind of organic, or you could even get organic, that you smoke and you feel a little good. But my point is is that you shouldn't be able to... Any substance. Any substance. Not on having the natural state of mind, natural body, mind, spirit, numbing the senses creates lower vibration that is a fact okay i don't care no that's that, marijuana that. scientists like i can we can agree to disagree yeah yeah this is what i do right oh, that conversation a living yeah and i've seen it i've seen people addicted to it i've seen people not addicted to it and i've seen what it does to them just doing the first time and i i i see it every day it, it's an issue it's a problem and so these people that are being influenced by these drugs are being controlled they don't realize it, but this is where I come in, and I see it. I'm surrounded by this every single day, and it's tough being in 5G, really, honestly. And so, and oftentimes when I'm riding my motorcycle, I feel everything, so I I kind of tune into 3G, and it, I handle the bike a lot better when I'm in 3G. But when I'm in 5G, I feel everything, and it's not fun. Riding. It's too much. It's just too much. It's it's nice, but that's why I tend to focus more on connecting to my higher self when necessary. Mm. When I go in and I know that I'm going to have a session with somebody, I spend the whole day connecting to that person. What, what's, what's the process of your session? It depends on what they need intuitively. So, so yeah, like what, what, what's a common so thing? So like for you, you, for you, I would say, um, uh, for example, uh, self-esteem, you know, um, there's, there's some com complex stuff there, inner child. Um, and it doesn't mean that you don't have to have bad parents because you can be connected to your parents. But if you they don't make you feel worthy of yourself, then we have to work with that energy. We have to fix it. You know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> so... Let's say if you have uh, health issues and doctors can't find out what it is, they come to me. And uh, I have a lot of doctor friends that I know that they send people to me to, for misdiagnosis and to find out what's really wrong with them. So it helps them. Um, doctors? <clears throat> yeah. Wow. I had a, a friend of mine reach out to me and she goes, um, well, he said, hey, man, something's wrong. You know, I, I need, need your help. Can you? session with her since you're having a problem so I, I went in and the doctor actually said that she had a lump in her her breast and so um i did some work on her i found a lot of stuff i mean there's personal stuff that i found that i knew just to reassure her that i wasn't i was real yeah because i needed that intuitively she wasn't she didn't think i knew what i was doing but once i told her she goes she was surprised. You could see the look on her face like, oh, my God, how'd you know that? So when I went in the first round, I actually found uh, this bump wasn't in her breast. It was in, it was a, in her lungs, mm -hmm. and it was second stage cancer. So I t I, once I told her this, it's like, you know, you have second stage cancer. And it's like, well, how did you find out? How do you know this? It's, it's hard to explain, but... 
So the doctor probably missed it because she was he missed focused. He missed it, it because he, he was just looking at the breast area <laughs> or something. No, no. I'm, 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 <laughs> Cause I, like if he did X-rays, or I, I, you know, how, how would he miss? I that? mean, that's that's the sad thing about med, our medical system, and it happens you know, all the time. There's no eye and wellness, right? right? But Western medicine doesn't teach, uh, you know, how to prevent it or how to. They only fix it temporarily or give you here, take this pill. Yeah, it, it's the whole. Uh, it's the whole. Uh, right. You have a rock in your shoe. Right. They don't remove the rock. They just give you medicines to just numb right. the pain, so you continue walking. So this is one of the reasons why I explored into that realm. I, I studied nutrition. How um, I became a holistic practitioner. Um, uh, you know, studied metabolism, tissue aging, and worked for a stem cell research. Um, that I was a chemist and did. A, a, both spectrums of chemistry, bio, biochemistry and metallurgical. Uh, what I found more fascinating was the the body side of it because I wanted to find a cure. I wanted to prevent it, and I and I, I wanted to treat it. Uh, why is it happening to us? You know, and because of you know my family members getting sick or having cancer or stuff like that, and Leukemia. My uncle died of leukemia. My grandfather died of, of uh, cancer. Uh, he had a um, an orchard, so it was prominent for him. You know, every single day being exposed to that pesticide. Um, so, uh, according to astrological and numerology, according to the year I was born, my focus is all about nutrition and well being and spiritualism. So finding this out when this lady put me down on the floor, you know, on, on, on the floor, on the table, I started, you know, downloading all that information and uh, I became who I am today. That's amazing. You know, you know, I, I always had this theory of because um, you talk about coming back to the earth and different levels and different things. And, uh, you know, I, I always think that's what your your sign is. You know, Gemini and Taurus and Leo, that, that, that represents how many times you've been in back onto this planet. Mm -hmm. So, like, I, I, I like, so there's this belief that, there's a belief that there's, there's no. We'll do a test. What's your birthday? 526. Um, what year? 82. So, have you done any numerology at all? No. You know what numerology is? No. Nope. Numerology. So basically your birth date and the time, you know your time you were born? Exactly? No. Well, that's important. I think, uh, I think. Did you know that the time. I think time, it was like 836 in the morning or something. It has to be. We have to know. No, I don't. I don't. Because that exact time space, uh, according to all the astrology and the whole galaxy, everything that was aligned yeah. in that second you were born. Here, let, let's 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 is a frequency, is a is a vibration, is an energy that only you came through this. Hold on. Are you calling on. your mama? Yeah. Ay mijo. She's got a cago de pollo already. <laughs> so what was the year you were born? Eighty two. Like you're young, man. Let's see, eighty two. Month? May. Oh, you're a Taurus? Nope, Gemini. Oh, you flip. Oh, we get, oh. I go from happier to happier. Uh, what, May? 26. 26. 82. And I'm going to bleep all this out of the the dates, obviously. You are going to bleep it out? Oh, I'm, I, no, nobody needs it. What, should I give my social too? Yeah. Yeah. So you're born May 26th. 1982? That's correct. Okay. So numerology, basically, it's a number representing that time and space exactly where you were born. Mm -hmm. According to your uh, the numerology, you're a number six. This is your life path number. And it means you're the counselor. So would you want me to read it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do so it, So you're all about uh, caring Healing, protecting, and teaching others. Ooh, that sounds just like me. 
you are you are short. No, what what a that fucking <laughs> what, what a dick, man. I'm just kidding. My cock's hey, huge, man. But you know, you're supposed to stand out because you're yeah. a good looking guy. You know? Oh, thank you. So man. you're supposed to stand out. Thank you know you. what I mean? That if way you're I short or show? tall, it doesn't matter. That's right. You know? That was all the size of your cock. You right, know? right. I'm only two inches oh. off the ground. But oh. anyway, you are the stabilizing <laughs> factor that maintains a tight knit family or community. However, oh. you're carrying nature may be overwhelming at times and become insensitive and meddling. This is hard to read without my glasses. No, no, I can't. I'm 53, man. You're 53? Yeah. You look fucking amazing, dude. I thought you were like 39 (laughs) or something. Thank you. I thought you were like one of those dorks that's like, oh, man. 53, that's good. (laughs) Uh, Others may also take advantage of you. Fuckers. And sacrificing your nature. So That happens all the time. um, It's happening right now. So... That's just the basic life path number. So um, number six. Here is your yeah, and I'll I'll send you all this. I mean, cool. you can get it. So your central focus. This is your purpose here on Earth. You are born with a innate desire to help. Okay, and I see that in you. You have this, you know, good nurturing ability, comforting. Same. Thank um, you. You support and comfort others. Others will perceive this is in you as and will approach you for assistance so you wind up helping others right all the time as a result you will meet many people and um, become they'll actually take advantage of you a hundred percent probably well, happens all, probably all, all the time too because you're so kind he's like hey man it'll take advantage of you let, yeah. let me, like let me take out your bike for a couple of days man yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> hey, hey, man, help me pay my rent. Hey, I need a place to stay. Oh, really? Yeah, hey, I, I need a job. Hey, I need, yeah. can I borrow money? Hey, um, man, I'll get you back. I got you. Yeah. Never. And ever. therefore, uh, it is important for you to learn how to give and take, especially take people's know how lives. to say no. Something I preach all the time and yeah. something I don't do enough. So let me put my glasses on because I can't see. I preach that all the time. And not. here it says, you will feel responsible for both others and yourself. And you must learn to respect others, especially their boundaries. And try to avoid intruding too much into their lives. Develop the skills to guide and assist those around you and empower them without over-interfering. This will be one of your biggest challenges. It is also important for you to accept that there is no such thing as a perfect world. Learn how to let go and move on. Uh, as long as it's not bogged down, there are life's misfortunes, you know, so whether they occur in family relationships or elsewhere, those are the positives. Okay. Those are the positives. There's there's negatives, negative expressions. The negatives, you will initially feel unhappy with your overwhelming sense of responsibility, but you will uh, come to accept that as your life, well, I won't say it says here, but you will come to accept it as your life's role. So we have to take charge. There is destiny. Destiny can change. Yeah. Taking responsibility doesn't mean that you should dominate a situation. Be careful not to become overcritical and don't protect your expectations when dealing with others. Makes sense. Yeah. So that's just a brief, you know, I'll send you all yeah, this because yeah. it goes I like on. That. I make a reading I like for that. forever. So. That's yeah. basically not that the what numerology is. So, and if I, and if I gave you the the month or the the time, if you give me the time, then I can actually do your astrological chart, so I can tell you everything about where you're going, what you're doing, what times are going to be challenging for you the most. Yeah. Um, if you have health concerns, you need to watch out for in those spectrums, and this is great. I mean, I mean, there's mystery. Right. I don't really tell. Um, a lot of people ask me, do you do tarot? I go, yeah, I do tarot, but I don't really like giving bad news. Yeah. Because tarot, you know, I only do them. My mom does that. You know, my, my, my mom did that one time. Really? I was going through like a, I don't want to say a dark time, but a troubling time. And I, my, she knew nothing of it. Nothing. And and she wanted to throw the cards. Uh, but, you know, she la, las tarjetas españolas. Yeah. And she, she threw those. <laughs> Fuck, man. She nailed everything. I was like, oh. and my mom was like, I'm going to stop. I think this is wrong. I go, you have no idea how on point you are. 
and she kept going and everything was just right right i mean like i said there's there's a lot of people out there that are going through things man a lot and that's why that's why you gotta realize it be nice to them man you gotta you 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 have to be kind to people you know no matter what you know even if they're in your face i I just i just heard something recently that um fuck where did i hear this man I, I can't remember where I heard it. The it news? Was, no, no, no. It was a story. It was a story. It was something. But basically, it was about a detective that investigated suicide, suicidal deaths. Mm-hmm. And he had done this for years and years and years and years and years. And like, you know, oh, this person, this was absolutely a suicide. This wasn't a suicide. Oh, this one wasn't. Blah. You know, whatever. And and he kind of he kind of grew to it. Like, he just, it was normal. And the, they asked him, was there, where the fuck did I hear this? They asked him, did one ever stick out more than, than, than the others? And he goes, there was one that stuck out more than the others. And he goes, uh, he goes, well, what happened? And he goes, well, there was a guy, he threw himself off a building. And, when, you know, we found the body, you know, clear suicide. Uh, we went to his property, to his house, his home, apartment, whatever the case is. And there was a note very typical of a suicide. But what was inside the note was was the shocker. And the letter started with, you know, I'm going to take my life because blah, 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 blah. But he put one condition. And, and the condition was, if anybody says hi to me or smiles to me on my way to my death, I will not kill myself. You know what I mean? So he's all, look, I, 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 I can't live this life no more. I'm done. But if anybody on the way from point A to B just smiles or says hi, I won't do it. And that's where he was like, fuck, what a society that we live in that this guy's life could have been prevented just by a simple hi. And it goes back to what you're saying. You need to be positive because you don't know you sometimes get a car and there's a car in front of you and they, they slow down you're like fuck you motherfucker <laughs> you don't know if they're gra- out, yeah. you don't know what's happened in their life you don't know if they lost a loved one or their wife just cheated on them or they their kid like you, you you have no fucking idea and that's something no. that we're just we're just like oh you know i just found out today a friend of mine his brother committed suicide yesterday Oh man! And uh, I saw him today. I was coming on my bike down on Mulholland, and I was like, "Man, you're dealing with that." And he just put a funeral together for his, another person that committed suicide. Um, uh, it was a, um, a son of two people that we knew uh, in the area. Speak closer to the mic. So basically, what happened was is um, whenever someone commits suicide, there's two things that happen. It's not them that are committing suicide. It's an entity. Most of the time, it's an entity possession. An entity's telling them to do it. The entity's telling them. I mean, they're here voices. You know, you hear it so often, but anybody that takes their life is some form of attention that they need. You know, uh, like when they were killing somebody, nobody really says they're going to kill somebody. They just do it. But if they're saying they're doing it, it doesn't pan, pan out the way they want, you know, because yeah. it's just for attention. And that's most of the time. What I found in was with spiritual entity possession, that's real, man. And you look at homeless people, for example, you see them yelling and screaming at someone or something, and you say, like, man, this guy's crazy. That is a real entity possession. And it's demonic possession. And they can come in very various states, um, malevolent and malevolent. Malevolent's not so harsh, but malevolent is. And it can change. Um, the demonic ones, once one gets in, then they invite others, and then there's no going back. It's horrible. Yeah. Um, they, You hear voices, and they literally take your soul and spirit and they have the power to do that because you've been uh, intoxicated most of your life. It Long enough. lowers your vibrations, and it's it's basically you have no no uh, 
mindset, no spiritual control. You know what I mean? Uh, no well, abilities. It, well, well it, it, it's hard because you're, you're talking about a certain extent, a certain point where it's like it's almost a lost cause. But even the day-to-day tasks, like your mind is a dick. Your mind's a fucking dick because your <laughs> mind will give you a million reasons not to go to the gym and then you'll be like, well, you, you don't have those shoes and your favorite socks are dirty and, 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 and just, well, you know, you haven't seen that episode of Netflix and your mind is convincing you to like be as lazy as possible for whatever fucking reason. But then at the end of the day, your mind's like, you bitch, you didn't go to the gym, you fucker. I can't believe what a lazy fat <laughs> fuck you are. You know, like your mind fucks with you, then, let alone. That, you think that's your subconscious? I, I I don't that that's that's something in my fucking your subconscious head. Subconscious is powerful, man. Let, let me let me tell you something. I know for a fact people face this all the time, and this is why there's so many fat slobs and so many people out of shape and so many people <gasps> are not taking care. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't give a fuck, you know. And 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 this is why it exists because it, it's not easy, man. It's not easy to eat good. It's not easy to work out. It's not easy. To Wait, stay well, fit. Hold, hold, hold on. No, no. I'm talking about normal. It's not easy. That is a mindset. Hello. You are what you eat. You have control of that. I understand that. But, the, okay, if you want to get into food, you could do what you, I understand what you're it's saying. It's a vibration, but man. It, I, I understand that. But but the, it's, a, it's a challenge. And and the goal is to beat that challenge and to do it. This moderation, if you're, if, you're, if you're tired, if you're sore, if you're feeling lazy, if you're feeling sleepy, to get up off, off your ass and, and work out. Right. You know, or, but you who's know. who's controlling that behavior? That's, you, that's your lazy question. mind. No, your lazy mind. It's your, your, your subconscious. Lazy, your your sub whatever. Your subconscious is looking for comfort. Right. Your subconscious wants so, donuts and cupcakes and fucking a frappuccino with whipped cream <laughs> and right. extra toppings, and then it wants you to fucking sit on a couch with a blanket with the AC full blast and watch fucking you know Ozark until fucking desperate housewives. Yeah, desperate housewives. <laughs> Porn. No, I'm kidding. You know, like or maybe I'm not. I, who knows. But like your mind, your subconscious is, is keeping you. And of course, you got to be like, fuck you, man. I ain't doing that shit. I'm so gonna- let me ask you a question. You're talking on the phone and you're walking at the same time. Mm-hmm. So who's doing all the work? Your subconscious or your conscious? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a habit. What, what are you paying uh, attention to when you're... you're Paying attention, I pay attention to, to everything. I pay attention to my phone, my surroundings. I'm, I'm looking. Somebody just walked by me. But, somebody has their dog. It just peed over right, there. There's a car coming. When you're listening to the phone, your conscious is, is this is what the focus is. Right. But your subconscious, which is the most powerful part of, mm. of your mind, is actually doing the walking. And that's where we come in as light workers. We reprogram the subconscious. Yeah, and then in early times they've had hypnosis to come in and well reprogram well, them. No, no, I I I get that. What what? Because I because we're talking about suicide and and yeah. mental health, but that and, all, and it's all related. To I it. I understand that, but and I don't want to I don't want to get off the topic of the suicide because that's that's something that if we can prevent it somehow, we need we need to do our do our part, or anybody has to, anybody and everybody has to do their part. My question to you, well, my point was the regular tasks. For regular healthy individuals, they it's it's difficult sometimes to deal with your thoughts, let alone that if you're sick or to that extent. Somebody that's thinking about doing suicide or knows somebody that's dealing with su- or thinking about doing suicide, what what would you recommend? How do you deal with this or how do you approach someone? What would be your your recommendations? Well, it's not that I get recommended; I get called to, to help them and. The first thing that I do is remove that entity yeah. or entities, and it's tough. I just did one like two weeks ago, um, and this was really aggressive. I mean, it was choking me at first, and then the, when I actually got him down on the, on the table, in this case in their bed, um, I laid him down, and then I felt them pushing me down on the floor, and I couldn't breathe. Mm. So I went out the room, took a breath called to my source and give me the power and the strength to, to help them. And then it took about, you know, two hours roughly. I didn't time it because I, yeah. I, I just focus on the energy. And, and time. you probably can't even focus on time. And it's kind of like a modern day exorcism, man. That's what really what it is. And to, to actually have the gifts to, to do this is really fascinating. But at the same time, it's scary. 
I don't go in with the fear. I go in with the power and the mindset that I'm going to remove this guy. And they don't want it. They fight you. And that's why they come in and they start choking you. They pull you down to the ground. They do everything in their power not to do it. But that's what I do is I go into their subconscious. I go in and talk to them because that's the power you have. Your subconscious mind is the most powerful. It's not your conscious mind because your conscious mind is the most programmable. Right. You're influenced by the, the phones. You're influenced by the death scroll and on Instagram saying this is what you have to like and what you have to be. Um, and so they're programming you easily through food, through manipulation, through the things you watch and observe, right. through your conscious mind. Your subconscious mind is the one that needs the work. And that's when I go in and then I do it. Uh, recommendations like- for suicide? That's a tough one because, I mean, I'm sure there's there's profession. I mean, there's 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 ways. The working sure with someone that commits suicide is basically there's a there's a wide spectrum of things that they'd be going through, and we have to just dig them up, and they have to come to the surface, and that's the only way you can treat it. You know, I'm having a background in psychology, I can tell you that is difficult because you all these things have to come on the surface to deal with them. But so many people are suppressing them. So many people are pushing them down, and they don't want to deal with it. So they take the drugs. They take this because it makes them feel good. to ease the pain, to cover it. It's a substance, you know, that numbs the senses where they don't have to feel that anymore. But that's the today's world we're living in right now. You see so many. Yeah. And look. Well, it's worse today. Here's an example. You just see everybody posting happy Uh thoughts, and they're not. Yeah. They're they're doing it to appease them, and you're really suffering. And I can see it. I yeah, David, 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 uh, David Peterson, uh, Jordan Peterson. Do you know who that is? Anyways, he, he the guy's fucking brilliant. And he, he was like, oh, no, I think it was Gary Vee. It was one of those guys. And they were like, if, if your mother and father are arguing and yelling at each other, like they hate their fucking guts, but you're at Disneyland for whatever reason, and they smile for a picture and post the happiest day of our life, and the kids are seeing you the parents argue that's a big fucking problem like that's a huge fucking that's not that's so deep and and and, and like that's fucking crazy right well it's fucking crazy like i said people a lot of people are going through some stuff but everybody's do they want to do the work on themselves that's the question you know it's and you can't force the, that yeah i can't change anybody i'm just a messenger i'm giving people tools and giving them messages only time can change people, man. That's the reality. Of these yeah. If it is, I just go out and live the best life I, I can possibly, you know, can live until yeah. I die. I'm, I shed this wardrobe and then I come back to another body. You know, my soul and spirit will live forever. And that's the greatest thing about resonance is that we, we made marks with people that we've established this connection with through soul and spirit that we're reconnecting with these people. Yeah. You know, in a soul resonance way. And that, that that's where like the deja vu's come yeah, from. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, you sound yeah, oh I know. I know you. Like yeah. you, you're so you sound so familiar, you know. It's like oh, hey, you're fucking <laughs> <laughs> And that's what the you resonance owe me money from a different lifetime. Right, right. This fucker. <laughs> Dave, uh, uh, uh the great conversation and, and we're gonna have to do this again. Uh, please, uh, wh- wh- where can everybody find you? What's your Instagram? Do you have a website? What, what, uh how- Little Chico Official is both of my dogs um, and myself. You can find us on that. Um, and we didn't even talk about your bike this time, which we'll do next time. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's all right. I mean. Fucking kick-ass it, bike, man. Yeah. Kick-ass bike. I just, it's not for standing out. It's just when you have the best and you want to do things with it. That your bike's so fucking sick. I, I, I don't say get, that. I don't say that about a lot of people's bikes. This bike's pretty fucking you gotta get the sick. best. He picked it, That's and so this is what it turned out to be. You know, I just I I like to ride, and I want to ride good, and, and this is what I chose it to look like. You know, not just be, not because of the ego. It's just unfortunately, um, a lot of people tend to think that, but it's not. It's just when you do something that is different. I want to be different, and, and if you notice everything, see, that but I these do disclaimers is don't even need to exist. They don't even need to exist. You don't need to justify anything. You just need to say, that's my bike. Mm-hmm. 
That's that's my bike. Let's see real quick. Uh, ¿Qué pasó? Oye, una pregunta. ¿Qué hora nací? <laughs> ¿A qué hora naciste? Sí. De día. De día entre las 10 y las 11. ¿Entre las 10 y las 11 de la, de la, de la mañana o de la tarde? Sí, de la, no, de la mañana, de la mañana. De la mañana. Mm. Ok, perfecto. Gracias, mami. Ya te llamo para atrás. Ok, bye. Bye. All right, so you got that. Okay. Cool. Dave? Hey, man. Thank you, man. Send me some info. Perfect. <laughs> perfect time. Like, boom. We got the whole thing. Yeah. Boop, boop, boop. All right, brother. Thank you, guys. Thank you for having me. Absolutely.